Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Troy Latino Interviews. Today I have the great pleasure to have with me as a guest, Lisa Bray. How are you, Lisa? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> uh, could you introduce yourself a little bit to our viewers so that they can get more acquainted with you? Uh, sure. I'm, my name is Lisa. I'm currently consulting with the New York Times, which was also my first job in Android. Uh, I have a degree in computer science from MIT, and I've gone on to work at Google on the developer relations team, which is the source of all my previous embarrassing videos. <laughs> awesome. So, Lisa, today I invited you because I wanted to discuss about libraries, and I think that it will be of great help that with your experience and with your opinion and maybe some advice that you have for us we'll have a great episode today so uh, I'm going to start by this question uh, as a developer how can I tell is the right time that to create a library this is this is a good question I think the time to create a library uh, is about the same time you would consider creating a module I think it's they're always really helpful to think about modularization in your code. So whether or not you're ever going to distribute this library externally, at the same point you start thinking about reuse or whether you can simplify and extract this code, that's the time to start thinking, should I make this a library, even if it's just for myself. Awesome. And I'm curious, do, do you happen to know what kind of alternative do we have to distribute the libraries? Um, the big thing right now is JCenter, mm -hmm. and that's where I would recommend putting your library today because everyone is on there. Um, I'm using Bintray. It's a pretty easy way of publishing to JCenter. Awesome. That's, that's good to know. Uh, so if you guys don't know, Lisa has a great open source library called Groupie, and if you guys don't, haven't checked it out yet, you definitely should. I will put try to put the, the link here <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can follow it and yeah so I have some some questions about the groupie uh, could you tell us what is it what is it for uh, uh, yeah uh, so it's it's a it's a library that started as a way to simplify making very complex recycler views in which you might be showing many groups of content um, everything from posts with headers footers comments and you'll have many of those on a list, or uh, expanding or contracting lists, or long scrollable screens, which actually represent many different types of content. So it was an it was an attempt to make that as simple as possible. And I'm I'm still pretty happy with with how it's come out and the decision to open source it. So <laughs> that's really amazing. How did you come up with the idea? Um, I came up with it because we needed something like that mm -hmm. at the time. There was really no, there was really no solution for um, this idea of large-scale, complicated scrolling screens. There have been a couple in the meantime. Um, at the same conference where I announced it, I think Facebook announced Litho, mm -hmm. which is a incredibly much more complicated, <laughs> but probably also more effective way of addressing the same problem. Um, and then Airbnb introduced Epoxy. Uh, a couple weeks after I opened source mine. So I think there were a lot of us who are all trying to deal with the same problem in different ways. Uh, so now there's a couple alternatives, but there was definitely like a hole in the ecosystem that wanted to be filled. Wow, cool. So uh, I'm guessing that there, there, is a, there was a point that you decided that a groupie could be a library and could be released as a library, an open source library. Could you tell us a little bit uh, what led to that decision uh, that could help other developers? Yeah, um, so at this time I was working at Genius and um, it was a startup in Brooklyn and I was writing this code sort of because my code had become unmanageable. My code of adding a header, adding an image, adding a comment or whatever and trying to keep track of all of those in recycling. So I started writing this library as a tool for myself and I very quickly realized I was writing quite abstract code. And that's the point at which I began to wonder, can I separate this? Can I decouple it from the code at Genius and make it into a utility? And that's when I brought up the idea of open sourcing. And luckily, they were pretty open-minded about it. Uh, they really encouraged me to go for it. I think that was essential because it turned out to be way more work <laughs> than I anticipated. Uh, so having their support and being able to do that, some of that at work was, was really essential. Wow. Uh, thank you for sharing. 
uh, what what was the most difficult challenge that, did, that you faced it while you developed this library and how did you overcome it? Hmm. I I don't know that I had any huge challenges. It was difficult overall, but um, individual parts of it, it was just sort of, you know, incremental difficulties. Um, there were no major blockers. I think the biggest thing for me is that I had not really published a library for distribution before and mm -hmm. I started looking up resources about how to publish on Maven and I was extremely confused. I hate build systems. I don't like them. I don't want to know how they work and that was the problem. Uh, so I ended up finding the Novota Bintray plugin on, on GitHub, open source. And I used that, and it magically published my library, and I've been happy ever since. <laughs> wow, that's a nice... A nice uh, so if someone is thinking about beginning in open source, it doesn't have to be difficult. Um, <laughs> and you don't have to know what you're doing. <laughs> nice. Uh, so at the moment of releasing a library, do you think it's okay like, to wait until you have a very stable library before you make it open source? No, or? absolutely not. Uh -huh. um, publish it whenever you want. Like... <laughs> Let's be real, most people aren't going to use your library anyway. There are millions of developers in the world. Only the ones that like or trust you are ever going to use your library until it's stable, solid, and has a bunch of people on it. So publish it whenever you feel it's useful to you. Mm -hmm. So I published Groupie in alpha with a huge disclaimer on it. Like, this thing is in pre-release. We're using it, but you probably shouldn't. And I got a ton of great feedback um, immediately. And mm -hmm. people found bugs in it that I had been looking for but didn't know where to go. And... They knew. They knew it was an alpha. They went for it anyway. So publish whenever you're comfortable. So I published without a bunch of documentation, without a lot of tests. They're all there now. But yeah, it was helpful to publish early. Awesome. So at the moment that you pick a library to use, uh, or maybe that you develop a library, what kind of aspects do you expect to have in that library? Like if you want to use a library, first you consider that it's lightweight, that has some... Uh, that is sc scalable. Mm. Uh, what's your personal opinion on that? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the context. In the context of, say, my personal projects, mm -hmm. I just use whatever I think will be fun. If I'm thinking about supporting users or shipping a production app for a company, then yes, you want one with a small footprint that doesn't have a lot of dependencies. Um, but suppose it does have a bunch of dependencies, but those are common, like the support library or mm -hmm. RxJava. Um, after that, I think the most important thing for me is, is the API simple? Is mm -hmm. this library going to make my day-to-day -day life easier and make my code easier for other people to understand? Everything else I can work out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I just have one more question. Uh, is it okay to release libraries that depends on other libraries? Uh, how do I we mean, handle that? Yeah, that's kind of the, the previous question is... Mm -hmm. the, the way libraries have a large footprint is because they depend on a lot of other things. Okay. And I would say in general, it's okay to have dependencies, but you shouldn't, you should be way more careful about it because for example, if your library depends on Guava because you like some multi-map class, you're forcing everybody else to have Java in the, uh, Guava in their project, which is a controversial decision to say the least. Uh, so maybe it's okay to do that in your project where you can ProGuard and get rid of all the stuff you don't need. With a library, you should not should not do that. Other people should not have to pro-guard your library in order to make it a reasonable size. So yeah, you may have to end up copying a few utility classes into your project or whatever, but keep it keep it slim. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa. Is there mm -hmm. any last advice that you have for our viewers? Um, just keep it simple. Uh, start, start with small projects that that you are personally interested in and Don't be afraid to get into open source because your projects have mistakes or because you think you're not ready yet because you are. <laughs> get out there. <laughs> well, one more time, thank you very much for giving us a little of your time. And I'm pretty sure our viewers will appreciate it. And thank you. That's it for the episode of today. Uh, see you guys the next time.